Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome. I want to speak to you briefly concerning the secret place. The Bible recommends us to be in the secret place, but the secret place is a place so much important that the Lord wants us to uh, be and then be able to manifest great things. So when we read from the scripture, uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 says that, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. Jesus said that when we want to pray, he recommended us. He didn't say that if you want to, when, that means that it is a must that everyone need to pray. And every believer, every Christian is supposed to have a secret place, a place to interact with God. From the beginning of time, the Bible said that God visited Adam in the cool of the day. They had some interaction, some kind of fellowship together. It, it is good when we have a collective prayer time with other people, but we also need a time for ourselves alone with God. A time that we shut ourselves together, we off all our phones, we close our door, anything, the television, anything that will distract that is removed. It is a matter of avoiding distraction. That is why Jesus said that we need a secret place because there are a lot of places that people can meet, but God always wants to meet his people in secret place. If you want to see business people who want to um, chat or discuss about business issues, they cannot uh, just stand on the roadside to begin to do anything there, but they get into secret place. The Bible says that we should pray without ceasing. When you are walking on the road, you can pray. Anywhere that you are, you can pray. But there's an apportioned time of the secret place that Jesus recommended where we can be alone with God. Because sometimes God wants to speak to us. And in speaking to us, He speaks to us in the secret place. That is why He says that when you pray, get into the secret place shut the door and then commune with your father who is in secret and he said he will reward you openly sometimes for you to get manifestation or reward it is to be in the secret place maybe you are praying for um, your, your career maybe you are praying for your business you are praying for your marriage you are praying for a breakthrough God wants to speak to you give you a word a direction or something that will open your heavens for a breakthrough but he wants you to be in the secret place that's why um the psalmist said that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty so there is a place that god wants to interact with his people those uh in, in the past we used to see people who were uh, in the other side of the world they, they, they worship uh, uh, deities and other things. They always get into secret places and then do their transactions. And then we see manifestation happening. And God is always in a place where he wants his people to be with him secretly. That, that's what happened with Adam and uh, what do you call it? God in that time. So the pattern of God has always been in that place. We remember that Jesus set an example. The Bible says that he will wake up early in the morning before cockroach or before um, sun's, um, the, the sun will rise. He will pray and even in the course of ministration, preaching and other things, he will also slip off from the ministration, go to a solitary place, a mountain place alone with God to commune with the Father. And then that's where he's empowered. When he comes, we see miracles happening. So even if he wants to pray publicly, we see that it is thanksgiving that he gives. When he wanted to um, multiply bread and the fish for the thousands of people to eat, he only gave thanks. Why? Because he has been in the secret place already and done his homework. He has prayed. So the heavens have been opened on his behalf. So when he gave thanks, the, the miracle started. When we want to see manifestation, we want to see miracles, we have to learn to be in the secret place. Hallelujah. Because the secret place is a, a, a place that uh, we, we, we can say that it's a place of control, a place of dominion, a place that we can control issues, a place that we can command things to be in place. Because it's a place of power. Because that is where the Almighty comes to interact with man. Hallelujah. So when Jesus wanted to resurrect um, um, uh, 
uh, Lazarus, when Lazarus died, similar thing happened. He only gave thanks. Why? Because he has already been in the place of prayer. The secret place is a place that is so much important with God and important with believers. The Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Ghost and therefore we have been made to pray. And prayer is the only means that we can be able to connect with the Father. So our prayer altar, our place of prayer, our secret place is the place, our, it's a place that we can call our prayer altar, where we'll always be there to commune with God. God always interacts when we talk about an altar. Altar is a place that the divinity um, interacts with humanity. So it is a place where the, the sp spirit, it can be God, it can be anything, which will manifest through to uh, minister to uh, humans. So when we get to the secret place, the God's presence will be there with us to help us in any need that we are in, anything that is upon our heart that we want to commune with God to with or pray or uh, do anything about. God wants to want Him to do anything about. He will do it for us in the place of prayer, in the place what, what we will call the secret place. So the secret place is very very important. And I want to recommend this place to you that as you get this place, you can change atmosphere, you can change situation. And start when there was a problem in her, in, in her days that Mordecai sent him to go and meet the king. She requested that they should, the people should fast and pray. There was a political fast going on in prayer for her, yet she was in the secret place communing with the Father. So when she came out, and then she got in the presence of the king. The Bible says that she had favor, great favor, that whatever she asked was done for her. And she was God used her as a means to deliver his people from a genocide that the enemy intended to um, do unto God's people. So a place of prayer can avert danger. The place of prayer can open the heavens for us. The place of prayer can bring abundance. The place of prayer can be a place that our needs can be met. A place of preservation. A place where we can interact with God. A place that we can have sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit. God always uh, requires that we have time for Him. Because if you don't have time, you can't be in the secret place. So the secret place is a place that you can be. A place that you can interact with God. A place that you can see the glory of God. A place that uh, God has ordained. He says that when you get to the secret place, he says that your Father who is in secret will reward you openly. It's an assurance that there's a reward that comes in dwelling in the secret place. Hallelujah. So when you get to the secret place, you will receive a reward after you have prayed. What you have asked of God is going to give it to you. You're going to have manifestation of answers. God will also even give you, if there's a timing attached to it, God will let you know. So people who get to the secret place, when they come out, you will see them differently. When Moses got to the presence of God and he came, the Bible says his face was shining. He was in a secret place with the Father on the mountain. So when people saw him, they started running away because his face was glowing. And then later he has to put a veil when he wanted to speak with them. And at this, everything happened in the secret place. Hallelujah. So, as the psalmist is saying, he says that uh, when we get to the secret place, he says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In him I will try. So surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and the, from the snare of the noisome pestilence. For says, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. He says that a, 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 a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come near thee so we can see the benefit and the blessings of being in the secret place so when you get to the secret place there's protection even if there's danger around there there is a kind of um, um the, the divine covering of the lord over you when you get to the secret place you will be preserved 
in things that the enemy intend to harm, you will be far away from. He says that the enemy who is coming in one way will flee in seven ways. He said that there will four thousand at your uh, left hand, ten thousand at your right side. So that is one of the benefit of the secret. He says, no evil shall befall thee, neither plague shall that come nigh thee your dwelling, because you know that you are always interacting with God in the secret place. So when there is evil, evil cannot come to the secret place because the Bible says that our lives are hid in Christ and in God. So when you are interacting with God in the secret place, know that that kind of protection, Satan cannot break through God and then come and attack you. So that's why it's important for us to um, be in the secret place. He says that they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash their foot against the stone. So that means that in the secret place, when we get to that place, when we are getting into danger or something um, planned by the enemy against us, a trap or whatever, God will send his forth his angels to protect us, to keep us from this particular danger. And he says that we shall tread upon, he said, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, thou shalt trample on the feet. So you are empowered in the secret place so that the enemy will always be at your feet. That's why Jesus said that I have given you power over the power of the enemy. And you say you will trample them on their feet and they will never harm you. They shall not harm you. Nothing by them can harm you. Because when you get in the secret place, you are empowered. The fire of God is all around you. You get to a level where when you step out, demons begin to scatter. Begin, begin to run away from your presence because of the power, because of the anointing, because of the glory of God upon you on your life. Hallelujah. And when you get to the secret place because of your relationship with the Lord, something happens. He said, because he says that because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set his name on high because he has known my name. So that kind of fellowship and interaction will cause you to know the Lord the more. Anyone that you want to know better is the person that you stay more with. And you can understand even married people when they, 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 are, in, they are friends, they don't know themselves. But when they marry and they, sit, they stay together, the more years they stay, the more they get to know themselves. So the more you get to sleep in the secret place, the more you get to know God through His Word. So if you don't have time for God, even in the secret place, you will not get to know Him more. Because those who spend time in the secret place say that He unveils the covenant unto them. Hallelujah. He says that, He shall call upon me, and I will answer Him. And I will be with Him in trouble. And I will deliver Him and honor Him. So He said that even when there is trouble around, Jesus said that in the world there will be tribulation, but in Him there shall be peace. So in the world there is trouble. That's why... Um, there was an encouragement to the children of Israel that he says that um, when we pass through the waters, the Lord says he's going to be with us. And when we pass through the sea, it's, or the, 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 the river or the waters, he said they will not overtake us because God is with us. When you learn to be in the secret place, you will enjoy God's divine protection. His angels will be around you that even in the troubles time, he said he will be with you. So you will not be afraid. You will be like as the psalm is saying that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and He leadeth me beside the soul waters. He restored my soul. So, He says, If you walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, He said, I will not fear any evil. Hallelujah. Because He knows whom He has believed, and He knows whom uh, He has trusted. And because of the relationship in the secret place, He knows that God is able. God who begins something is able to uh, accomplish or finish it to the, the perfect to the glory of the Lord. That's why he says that the thought and the mind that I have for you is not evil, but to bring you to an expected end. This will come to pass when we learn to be in the secret place, to relate with him. So he says that with long life will I satisfy him and will show him my salvation. Hallelujah. So when we learn to dwell in the secret place of the Lord, the most high God, the Bible says that He is going to reward us openly. We will abide there, it's a place of residence, we will stay, and then He says that he, His reward is going to come. So, for our manifestation to take place, for what God intends to do in our life to come to pass, we need to get to the secret place. If you're a child of God, 
uh, if, if, if you are serving God or whoever you are, many people see that we, they want to read the word of God, but in the area of prayer is small. When uh, you, you limit the area of prayer in the secret place, you will miss many, many things. Without the word, without prayer, you can't get revelation. Prayer opens you up. So when you get into the word, the word, you see the light of the word of God coming in. Hallelujah. So the word and, the, and, and prayer moves together. So I want to encourage all of us today that let us learn to be in the secret place of the Lord, the Most High, and we will abide in His shadow. He said that as when you pray, get into the secret place. Don't let anything distract you. Commune with your Father in the secret. And as you do that, He will reward you openly. I prophesy that your reward will manifest very soon as you begin to learn to spend time in the secret place with the Lord. The Lord will bless you. I pray that the Lord release the grace of prayer upon you, that from this time forward, you will embark on prayer. Be on the secret place as you pray. That the Bible says men always ought to pray and not to faint. And as Paul said, that pray without ceasing, that our lifestyle will uh, be a, a lifestyle of prayer that we can command the, 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 from the supernatural in the, uh, on the natural through our prayer closet. We, Father, we thank you and we bless you. Empower us in this area as we ask.